Winnipeg, my first time headed your way. I'll be there Friday, March 1st, and Saturday, March 2nd. Omaha, we're going to do it this time, I promise you. Last time we got our flights canceled, this time we're taking a straight shot. I'll be there Friday, March 29th, and Saturday, March 30th. Columbus, Ohio, I'm fired up to head your way. Never been there my first time coming to your beautiful city. I'll be there Friday, April 12th, and Saturday, April 13th. Los Angeles, I'm excited to announce that I'm part of the Netflix is a Joke Festival. I have my own show Sunday, May 12th at the Bourbon Room. You guys ask me, how come you're not on Netflix? Well, here's a chance to sell this thing out and show them why I should be. Get your tickets now. Don't wait. All tickets available at ryansickler.com. The Honeydew with Ryan Sickler. Welcome back to the Honeydew, y'all. We are over here doing it in the Night Pan Studios. I'm Ryan Sickler, ryansickler.com, Ryan Sickler on all your social media. And I'm starting this episode like I start them all by saying thank you. Thank you. However you support what I do, however it is, whether it's from stand up, the podcast, whatever, thank you. Thank you very much for every single thing you guys do. You make my life. This is it. I love my job and I love you know, bringing you guys content. So if you got to have more, you got to check out the Patreon. Listen, it's still five bucks a month. I haven't raised that price since the day we started years ago. And it's your show. It's the Honeydew with y'all. And it's this show with y'all. And I promise you, you're not going to hear any of these stories anywhere else. For five bucks a month, it's insane. All right. And the way back, we got a brand new show, premiered the first two weeks, number one in comedy interviews. Thank you so much for that. We still got it going. The guests you see here on The Do, we try to get them all over there as well, share different fun stories about just growing up. Uh, here, we like to highlight lowlights. Over there, we like to actually highlight highlights, for God's sake. <laughs> Uh, come see me on tour. All tickets are available at ryansickler.com. Now, that's the biz. You guys know what we're doing over here. We highlight the lowlights. I always say these are the stories behind the storytellers, and I am very excited to have this guest back on the Honeydew. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back, Brad Williams. Welcome hey, back, hey, Brad Williams. Thank you for having me, Ryan. There are there are there are a few people in this business that when I see their face and certainly hear their voice, I'm just happier. That's and, nice. And, and you are one of those. people. I was hoping you'd say you are not. One you of are those. not <laughs> one of those people. That is Bert Kreischer. That is. Uh, I see him. I'm happy. I see you. I'm just like. Uh, but it's still good to be. Crap. <laughs> now 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 the Ravens are good. So he's gonna be talking all the shit. <laughs> Asshole. Oh, uh, I don't want to bring up the My High Miracle, so we won't. But that's what we call it. I don't know what you call it in Denver, but in Baltimore, no, we call it the My High call, Miracle. We, we, we call it the Raheem effing Moore game. They, uh, yeah. Oh, no. I can curse, right? Yeah. yeah. It, it's the Raheem Moore yeah. game. And I and I know where I was when I was watching it. I was on stage at Tommy T's. Do you no, ever play Tommy yeah, T's? No, but I know Tommy T's. Tommy T's in Pleasanton. I don't even know if it's still open, but if it is, go there. Oh, it's wait, a great yeah, club. Pleasanton in between yeah. the, the bedroom East Bay. community. Yeah, I have done Tommy East T's. East Bay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When, 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 when they say the Bay Area, no, no, no. I was thinking Rooster T Feathers. Nah. There's a couple T's up yeah, in that area. Yeah, a couple T's yeah, up yeah. there. Tommy T's. I'm on stage. This is during the game. I'm a massive Broncos fan. And then I, I I gotta go on stage and do it. So I wasn't selling tickets back then. So the back was empty. So they closed the curtain, but they kept it just open wide oh, enough. No. So they had a TV on in the back. And I'm, I'm on stage, Ryan Sickler. I'm, wa- I'm watching the game and I can see it. I'm like, oh, we're good. We're, and I got a little pep in my step on stage, still doing my joke, still still doing all right. And Raheem F and Moore doesn't get back. Flacco bombs it. Who 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 got that ball? Jacoby Jones. Jacoby Jones catches it, and on stage, no context. You just hear me go, <laughs> like fifteen. <laughs> and everyone's just looking at me like, do we just for the first time in human history see someone 
get Tourette's. Like, like the, it, see someone yeah, just... Yeah, your uh, origin Tourette's story. acquired Tourette's. I don't know how. Oh, it, man. It, I, I forget what joke I was telling, but I just remember just yelling the F word as loud I as was, I could. I was yelling the other way, brother. Oh, I can only imagine. I couldn't even. I can only imagine that joy. The only... The, the 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 joy I have in comparison to that as a Broncos fan is uh, the Tebow 316 game, uh, oh, yeah. which we can bond over because at least it hurt the Pittsburgh Steelers. It did. So that's so you're a fan of that. And uh, yeah, Big that time. that was Tebow to Demarius Thomas. First play of overtime. R.I.P. Demar- Dem- Demarius Thomas. And he runs in. Touchdown. We're we're going on to lose to Tom Brady. All yeah. right. <laughs> a lot of people did, though. <laughs> a lot of, a lot of us. Did. It's OK. <laughs> um, well, it is so good to have you here. Yeah, I know what we're going to talk about. So this yeah. one's going to be emotionally charged for sure. But before we do, please yep. promote everything and all anything right. you would like. So here's all the promotional stuff. I'm going on a, a big tour in 2024. It's called Tour 24. Over 70 cities. We're not even done announcing yet. March 15th, there's going to be a big announcement with some international dates <coughs> and uh, some more dates. Brad Williams Comedy. Dot com. I am. I, I need this right now. One Get second. it, bro. Get it. Mm. Delightful. So, yeah, uh, going all over the country, over 70 cities. We're doing theaters now. Some big ones are uh, the theater at the Ace Hotel in Los Angeles on February 10th. Uh, we're, we're doing the Ryman Auditorium, the home of country music. Yeah. Uh, but that's going to be in Nashville. I, I believe that's in October. <coughs> Just some big dates. So, bradwinscomedy.com. And then. If you want to watch my brand new comedy special, go to veeps.com, V-E-E-P-S. And then you're like, Brad, I don't want to subscribe to anything else. You don't have to subscribe. It's fine. You can go on there. There's all these concerts. You can watch a... Is that right? <laughs> yeah, you can watch a concert by Alicia Keys, Billy Idol, uh, Imagine Dragons, and watch a comedy special. Billy Idol still doing his thing? Hell yeah, Billy Idol still doing his thing. Billy Idol, I want you <laughs> on this podcast. Mm-hmm. Billy Idol, I want you on this podcast. I'm a huge fan. Still killing it. I f- love Billy Idol. They gave Idol. me a Veeps pass so I can watch all the concerts. I watched the Billy Idol concert. Billy Idol. Killing it. Let's do the do, baby. It. So go to Veeps.com. The uh, special is called Starfish. Uh, it's different hour than uh, you'll hear if you go see me on tour. So, uh, yeah, go watch that special. I'm really proud of it. And uh, it came out on December 21st. Why did we choose that date, Brian Sickler? Why? Because that's the winter solstice, the shortest day of the year. <laughs> Marketing. <laughs> Look at that marketing. Coca-Cola wishes they had that kind of brand recognition. Shortest day of the year. That is Brad Williams Day. Good for you. Mm-hmm. Go watch Brad Williams special support. Yeah. Um, See me on tour. Do, do the whole thing. Look, I, I say I love my job and I do love my job. I, I really enjoy like sitting down with the people that make us laugh the hardest. And yeah. and because we don't really get to talk about everything. We see each other. It's a very solo sport. Mm-hmm. We see each other if there's a festival or, yeah. a, a, you know, we see each other if we're on the same line up in town. And you yep. get you get a few minutes with everybody because they have minutes. lives. I, I just got here 20 mm-hmm. minutes ago. I got kids. I got a sitter. I got to bounce right after this. <laughs> right. And maybe I'm doing the improv and I'm out of here. I got to yep. go. So to sit here and get to really learn who people are um, is one of my favorite things. And I've known you for a long time. Yeah. We've had some great private conversations. Absolutely. Um, you've become a dad, as, as I have, uh, mm-hmm. through this wild game. Um, but your dad is someone we're going to talk about right now because he yeah. passed just not too long ago. Yeah, less than two years ago, uh, May 9th, uh, uh, 2022. And uh, yeah. Uh, Can I stop you there just for mm-hmm. a sec before we talk about that? Sure. Let's talk about the man. Like, tell us Hell about yeah. your dad. Like, who was he? Where is he from? Yep. Uh, um, dad was born in Houston, Texas. Uh, uh, grew up the son of an, a Shell oil executive. So, really? Yeah. So, you know how, like, people talk about, oh, I struggled growing up. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Not me. That's the end of this episode. <laughs> I didn't struggle growing up. Shell, when you said it first, I was thinking to myself, like, shell. I'm like, oh, the shell? Yeah, the yellow the, yeah, shell. The shell. Where I go to get my yeah, gas? Yeah, that one. So his grandfather's a... No, his dad. Uh, his dad. Oh, your grandfather. My, my, my grandfather. Good old Bapa. Uh, 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 was uh, a shell oil exec? Or, yeah. Or a, uh, like oil in the oil family money uh exec so not family money so okay. just 
Now you you would never know that we were really doing okay because my dad liked to hide it. Like like How? We had, like we had a good house. Don't get me wrong. Great house, great neighborhood, all that. All in all, Houston. Uh, were you in Houston at first? No, uh, he he moved around, but uh, he and my mom uh, met in L.A. and I, we were in Orange County, California. Okay, grew, grew up in Orange County, and uh, so one way that he would hide it is uh, uh, we had air conditioning, but we were not allowed to run that shit. <laughs> <laughs> And you made enough money, too. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, because that was, it was expensive. That's what he would always tell us. Like you know how much. Now my dad loved to play golf. He he was uh he like to say that he was he played golf is a vast understatement. We knew as kids. Do we is is your game on Saturday? Dad's not going to be there because that because that's his golf game. Okay. So that that's that's his day. Now if your game's on Sunday, dad'll be there. He's gonna be cheering the loudest. He'll he'll bring snacks. He'll he'll be cracking jokes. It's well, gonna Saturday's be great. Saturday's dad's day. Saturday's dad's day. So uh, yeah, and, and so how many kids did your dad have? Me, me and my sister. Okay. So we're Beaver Cleaver house. Mom, dad. Can I ask brother, you? Sister. Because it's so. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's subjective. What is? Uh, you say you had a nice house. Give me. Yeah. Tell us about the house. House, two story. How many bedroom? Like what? G- g- garage, backyard. What we talking about? Technically three. Uh, three bedrooms. Three story. Oh, story. Why you say technically? Because it they call it tri level. Okay. But it's like, yeah. But there, there's. But two, no basement out here, right? You yeah, got the ground floor. No basement. You go up. Ground, ground floor, li- uh, living room. Uh, 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 we call it the utility room. It's basically laundry room, kitchen, dining room. Second floor, you go up one flight of stairs. Dad's office, family room, which we called the Christmas room because we never went in that fucker <laughs> and, yeah. and, and, unless it was Christmas. This is the shit I like to hear because I I did not grow up. like We had a house where we started. Yeah. It was nice and it all went to shit quick. And I'm like, <laughs> we did not have a room that was not occupied yes. in some fucking way. You know what I mean? Every, I, every room was occupied. It blew my mind. And especially now that I'm older and I got a house and it's like, I use every room in that yeah. motherfucker. Every room has a purpose. I don't see it. Like, it was a nice room. Was it like, a, I know some people would have a sitting room. So when yes. a company come over, they do yes. tea or whatever. Yes. Is it sort of that type Kinda, of thing? Kind of, yeah. But yeah. you guys just used it for Christmas. Christmas. That, it, That's where Christmas happened. Tree went up. <laughs> That's where you knew that you were that you were good to go. There, over Just there. in there. Chris is over here. I was in that room one day a year. <laughs> Christmas day. For only a couple hours. A couple, too. A couple hours. Stockings were in a different room, so you had to go to the other room. Where's Easter? Easter's yeah. down the hall. Easter's down the hall, guy. Nah, don't go to the Valentine's room. There's some kinky shit in there. But yeah, and then you go up flight of you stairs. Did, that's, that's, that is money. Just yeah. to have a just to Christmas have a room. Christmas room. Yeah. That's enough said right, right. there, right? Yeah. Then you go upstairs and you had the uh four uh four bedrooms. Par- uh parent parents room, my room, si- sister's room, guest room. Okay. So yeah. G- good, nice backyard. We had a pool. It was. It, it I'm was not even going to ask because I know everybody out here is in ground. Where yeah. I grew up, everybody was above ground. No, nah, yeah. we're in ground. In ground. Do you have a fence? You got a fence? Well, you have a yeah. pool, so you got to perimeter it off. All right. Yeah. You yeah. have a garage? Yeah. I had a garage. Yeah, you had it all out there. It was great. Man. All right. A wonderful, wonderful childhood. If you hear me complaining about my childhood one time, I'm drunk. Slap me and say, Brad, shut the hell up. And it so you had great. a good dad then? Great dad. Great, fantastic father. And your mom and dad were together and yep. everything? Good. Yep, stayed together. They had a great family upbringing. It was good. I got no problem. Orange County, California, mom and dad together. Uh, honestly, I'm I'm the black sheep of the family because they're all white, Anglo, tall, and then, and then they got the midget kid, and, and I'm the only weird one the in the family. the little sheep of the family. <laughs> yeah, I'm the little sheep of the family. Yeah, but, uh, and yeah, my whole family's average size, tall, to give you an idea of who my dad was is when they found out that I was going to be a little person. Can I ask you real quick? Yeah. Were you the oldest who was born first? I, I was the baby in the family. Okay. So, so you, they already had your yeah. daughter who, or yeah. their daughter, yeah. your sister, who yeah. was normal yeah. size. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then 15 months later, boom, here comes Brad. Uh, as I was told a few times, uh, conceived at a uh, at a bed and breakfast in Santa Barbara, California. Is that right? Yeah, uh, that's uh, what shell execs do, bro. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> not a Motel Six. No, no. Yeah. And so we have a we have a piece of furniture 
uh, that was in the house growing up. And one day, my sister was like, it's it, it, it called like a hutch or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, my sister was like, hey, when I move out, I think I'm going to take that hutch. That's a really nice piece of furniture. And my mom and dad looked at each other and went, I think Brad gets the hutch. <laughs> and w- we both kind of like saw it. We're like, what? Why do I get the hutch? I've never mentioned it. It's not like I've got fond memory. Wait, what? Why do I get? They're like, well, Brad, you were conceived on that hutch. No, <laughs> on it, on it, not up against it. It's so visual, dude. It's so visual. And you it's know what, so... Sickler, on it, bro. It's a nice piece of furniture. <laughs> I'll be damned. That hutch ain't in my house right now. It is. It's there. It's in, it's in the dining room. It's the reason you exist. It's the reason it I exist. Be. It should be. It's, That's it's my, the goddamn heirloom of heirlooms. Yeah, it's my origin story. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I stare at that thing every, oh, every, every no. night at dinner. Uh, so uh, uh, when they found out I was going to be a little person, my dad started going to these LPA meetings. LPA stands for Little People of America. And he, and he would go to meetings because he knew that I was going to be a dwarf. So he wanted to like, Get a little, and he and and he would sit in the back, and he and he would just listen. He wouldn't talk. He would just listen. And the story goes that he went to three, and the first two, uh, everyone was just bitching the whole time. All the, all the little people, they were just like, ah, "This part sucks. This sucks. This sucks." Finally, the third meeting, he's listening to him bitch some more. This sucks. This sucks. And my dad stands up and goes, "All right, all right." He goes, "I've been here three times. You guys have been bitching." about everything like everything sucks uh, my my son is about to be born we know he's a little person is anything good is there anything good and one little person goes yeah everybody remembers you and my dad stops and goes okay that's something i got and uh, I, everybody remembers you and it's kind of Poetic that now I'm a comedian and we're li- we're we're living in a time where eyeballs are the number one currency, and uh, uh, but no one ever when I get off stage no one no one ever goes who was the who was the guy uh, he went on last the white guy uh, no one says that everyone goes like yeah fucking midget that dude was funny as hell so I've got if, if you Google dwarf comedian midget comedian I'm pretty sure my photo is gonna pop up so it is true everybody remembers you. And, uh, yeah, I played sports growing up. My dad, and then I've told versions of this story on different podcasts, so I'll, I'll, I'll keep it brief. My dad, knowing that I was going to be a little person and that I am a little person, he knew how I would be bullied in school. He knew that, had that knowledge. So his philosophy was, I'm going to bully this kid first when he's like three or four or five years old. But he would bully me, but then he would do it in a way where like he'd make fun of me, but then say, okay, now I just – Said something to you, hit me back, hit me back with something. So I'd be like, oh, okay. It, it, and it became a game. And he and he and I would write comebacks together. Mm. So when I got to school and some poor kid saw me as fresh meat, was like, ah, I'm going to make fun of that. Oh, that kid was in trouble. Oh, that kid got it. Because they would come up be like, look at the little midget, whatever. And then I would just boom, 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 comebacks, comebacks, comebacks. And I got sent to the principal's office my very first day of school. Did you really? Yeah, because the kid said, ha ha, you're little. And I respond with, ha ha, your mom doesn't live with your dad anymore. <laughs> <laughs> my family's bigger than yours, my motherfucker. Fam- <laughs> my, fam- my family got love. Your family got child support payments? Fuck off. Like, and- can, can I ask you a quick question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was there ever a time Brad Williams was the big kid. Like first grade, were you bigger than the kid? You know no. what I mean? Did you ever have your nev- day? I was never the big kid. <laughs> Kindergarten, you were like, like, here no. I, like I'm stopping at this height, but I'm motherfucker, I'm the big kid. No, no one was bigger than Eddie Gonzalez, man. Eddie Gonzalez was in kindergarten. That was- you ever, you ever have the guy like now that I'm older and I and I, and I look back, I think this one fan, I think the Gonzalez family moved from the Dominican or something like that, and Eddie may have been twelve, I don't know, but he was in kindergarten. He would drink a full glass Gatorade every day, like glass, the like. I remember, remember yeah. the pop, 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 yeah, pop top, yeah, the pop, glass. the pop top and it glass Gatorade. It was only Gatorades. one flavor. It was yeah. only lemon lime. Yeah, that's that it. was it. That's it. And he would drink one of those every day. No, in no, kindergarten. In kindergarten. <laughs> This dude, I don't know what I don't know whatever became of Eddie. 
I imagine he's uh, lifting something heavy. He's, <laughs> yeah. he's lifting something heavy. That That's what he's doing. All right. So you were never, ever had your moment. Nah. One second is nah. the big kid. Okay. Never the big kid. I always wondered that. I'm like, well, did you shoot up quick first and then <laughs> level off? Like, I don't know how it Dude, any of it works. Here, here's how. Here's, I never was the big kid. And my, and, my, and my mom held me back from starting school and... I, I was a year older than every kid because she's like, well, he'll get a little bit bigger and then he'll be more. It, Mom, dwarfism. I'm not getting bigger. Not getting bigger. So, what age did you stop um, growing? growing? Oh, man. Tall. Uh, yeah, I mean, unfortunately, yeah, yeah. we all put pounds on. Yeah. So it was like, yeah, I was in like, you know, like freshman, sophomore year of high school because I, I grew just very like not fast at all mm -hmm. so yeah like freshman year of high school i i got to four foot four and that is where i have stayed that's the cap yeah that, that's where i stayed i've seen some dwarves topping out at four foot six and god bless them uh but yeah i'm i'm four foot four now out of all the things my dad did right and he did a lot right did a lot right one thing that i make fun of him for is that when i was born i was born left-handed okay mm -hmm. And my dad saw that and was like, ah, his life's going to be pretty hard as a lefty. Let's switch him to right. So he, like, essentially forced me to become right-handed. He and my mom would, like, make me grab everything with my, with my right hand. And I didn't know what that did I didn't, until I watched the movie The King's Speech. And then I found out, oh, when you switch a kid their dexterity, a lot of times the side effect is that they develop a stutter. No. Is that right? <laughs> yep. I had a horrible stutter when I was a kid. Oh, no. All because my dad was like, kids are going to make fun of him for being a lefty. I'm like, dad, <laughs> who gives a shit? They got more. Yeah. I, I, no, no, no kid looking to bully me is going to see me pick, pick something up with my yeah. left hand and be like, ah, that's, that's what we got. Forget the stutter. Yeah, Look how yeah, he uses yeah. that left hand. Yeah. Yeah. Forget the stutter. <laughs> forget yeah. his dwarfism. We got You're going to kill you. Lefty. Ah, uh, let's fuck him up. No. So yeah, that was the only thing you really got wrong. But er everything else, man, you, uh, we would, you know, we would take fa family vacations together. Uh, dad was funny. Dad was funny. I remember him just being funny. We would, uh, one of the hardest I ever laughed was my mom was really proud. She got this new, uh, new recipe for mashed potatoes. And she's like, I'm going to, because my mom, God bless her, she tried, not the best cook, tried. She's like, I'm going to do it. Mm, not good. But uh, one day she's like, I got this new recipe for, ma for mashed potatoes. I'm going to knock this out of the park. Apparently, some other woman used it, and it was great. She's like, this is going to be good. Tells us all. I'm making the best dinner. I'm making mashed, fresh mashed potatoes. It's going to be awesome. You're making me hungry, man. I know, right? <laughs> My dad comes home. It's been a long day for him. Now, uh, uh, his father was the oil guy. My dad was a lawyer, okay? Uh, 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 he, he was a public defender for a while and then a defense attorney. So he comes home. He's had a long day. And we could tell. Sometimes you just knew dad had a long day. And he comes in, and we got dinner right in front of us. And my mom's looking at the mashed potatoes, like, Look, try, try the mashed potatoes. And my dad just goes, whew, I'm tired. Boom! Face plants no. into the mashed potatoes. <laughs> Taters are flying everywhere. Kids are laughing. Her new recipe. Our new <laughs> recipe. <laughs> and mom, and my, my, my mom is, Pete! <laughs> I just so mad, and it, it just that just made. Her, and you still remember it, yeah. And that just made me laugh so hard. So I remember stuff like that. I, I remember him showing me comedy. I remember him showing me the Smothers Brothers. Mm -hmm. R.I.P. Tommy. I think Tommy just left us. Uh, uh, I, I don't know. Tommy to Smothers. I, I remember they were both gone. Yeah, I remember him showing me Jonathan Winters, mm -hmm. master of improvisation. I still know the clip. Of uh, of uh, he's on the Tonight Show before Carson, and someone hands him a stick and goes, "Hey, he can improvise. Here, hand him a stick." Some talking like that old time, like, "Hey, hand him a stick. He can do anything with it." And then he just John Winters takes a stick. He starts he starts fishing. He starts tap dancing. Like he's just just with a stick, just improvising. Laugh my tail off. My dad laughed. We'd watch uh, uh, clips of 
Carson and stuff. Like they would do like Time Life, whatever. Fifty Greatest Johnny Dude, that Carson. That Karnak shit. I love. Oh, I still love it. So good. Holding it up to his yeah. Head. yeah, so good. The 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 first one ever. The first uh, Johnny Carson Tonight Show ever. He got, he has an axe thrower on to like show how he can throw axes. Have you seen this clip? I, I don't think I have. This is Johnny Carson's this first episode. episode. One. <laughs> episode one. He has an axe thrower on. The guy's like. And they they have a they have a cardboard like a, a a wood outline of a of a man. And they're like, all right, show us how you can throw the axe and hit him in the head or do whatever. The guy goes, all right, so this is what you do. You line it up, and he throws. And on live TV in the fifties, I believe, might have been sixties, maybe whatever. Live TV, axe hits the guy right in the dick. Nah, I'm gonna go look for this clip. It's yeah. great. <laughs> Everyone in the audience is laughing hysterically and. Carson, that's why he was a master, just milks it. Just like, well, and yeah. just milks it. The la and because he's milking it, the laugh goes down. It yeah. goes back up. It yeah. goes back down. It goes back up. And then Carson finally looks at the axe thrower and goes, huh, I didn't know you were Jewish. <laughs> yeah. Kills. Uh, yeah. Kills. Yeah. So, yeah, we, we, we watch all that stuff. My dad uh, taught me how to play golf, and I like playing golf because if I can play golf, I get to hang out with him. It's, it, because you know now you got Saturday back. Now I got Saturday back because I because I can go play. Like he would play with his regular round, but then he'd stay and play another round. So with that's me. interesting. So would yeah. you just be the one kid? Did your sister golf? Mm -hmm. She did too. She we figured knew. it out. Yeah. We knew if, if if you wanted to really see dad and if you wanted time with him, you know, like it, which is weird because it's like we knew that if we asked, he's there. You know, you help us out with school projects and you know, yeah. But Sunday. what you're saying is more. I like this. It's not like it wasn't like Saturday's dad shit and no one's allowed to think. Saturday, yeah. this is what I do. But but he like didn't all. say, hey, you guys can't join me. Yeah. He never said, no, no, no. This is my private time. This yeah. is my alone time. He you're allowed to be there and welcome mm -hmm. to be there. But if you want to be here, this is what we're doing. Yeah. And he Fuck taught. Yeah. He taught us how to play. Mm -hmm. Taught us how to play fast. Uh, which was the most important thing. Taught us all the rules. He knew rules that the, the the book didn't know. This guy would like, and he made us play like by the rules every time. Uh, so, it, and my dad's roommate when he was, um, I don't know if his roommate or he. So, do you know Cleveland Golf? Cleveland Classic Golf. Have you ever heard of that? Mm -hmm. Okay, large company, Cleveland Golf. They make the best wedges in the world ever. My dad's roommate in college, Ro Roger Cleveland, ends up starting Cleveland Classic Golf. Oh, so it Cleveland wasn't already golf. a family thing no. then? He's, he did it? That dude no did shit. it. No shit. Okay. Yeah, still, I'm not a big golfer, so yeah, I don't know that. I still know, I, I still know the Cleveland family, great family. So because he's with a master golf golf smith, I had custom golf clubs oh, that, that were like four. So like, man, and my dad, nothing made him happier and taking me out to the golf course, having everyone see a dwarf get out of a golf cart. First of all, he taught me two jokes to always use, and uh, it was great. Uh, and I would all I, I use them to this day because guys would see him, and I'd get out of the golf cart and be like, "Oh, Pete, you're playing with your son today. How's this game?" And then uh, my dad would always look up and go, "Well, he can't drive the ball very far, but hell of a short game. <laughs> Kills." <laughs> Yeah, you're kills yeah. every time. And the other joke he taught me, where uh, 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 so someone would come up and go, Ah, Pete, playing with your son today. Uh, you any good? What's his handicap? My dad would look at him and go, Dwarfism, you piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Killed every time. Still does. Still does. <laughs> I'll, say, Still does I'll, 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 I'll say that every time I play golf. So, and yeah, he, he loved, because whenever I would tee off, the, a small crowd would form, and then I would hit, and he knew I could hit, and I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and, and I would, and the guys would go nuts. They'd be like, holy shit, kid can play. So, yeah. So, you just get out of that cart, and you drive that yeah. motherfucker straight as an arrow. Yeah. Like, You're driving better than you, Carl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It was great. I, I played golf with my dad. Until the the last time I played golf with him, this is when he was start. You know, 
he died at 77. So not, not not an old man. Not an old man. But uh he he had he had ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. We found that out later. And so this is when like he's starting to get weaker. The last time I played golf with my dad, we we played from the same tees and I beat him straight up. Had you ever before? Never. Never in your whole life. Never. The last time. And 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 it was almost like he's like, he's like my handicap's ALS, you <laughs> piece of shit. <laughs> you piece of shit. You're gonna do this to me. <laughs> no mercy, motherfucker. Dude. You're out here. You're getting a beating. Dude. Oh, that's funny. Uh, but yeah, and so it 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 was almost like we agreed, like, oh, that's not supposed to happen. Like I'm not. I'm not supposed to win. So once I won, it was like, all right, we're we're not doing that anymore. Which, and to be fair, he was that the last time you golfed, or he uh, golfed. He not or he not continued he to go golfed, by himself. He would go every now and then, but just to get out of the house. It, so yeah, let's talk about it. What happened? When did you start to see a note? When did he start? Because I had a friend of mine's yeah. father was very active, a runner and everything, and then it just took him so fast. Yeah. It uh, so he started about seventy. Four, just really 73 74 he, he he couldn't do it like what he, was happening like he, i'm just curious what starts yeah. happening to your body in the beginning like is it, it it's just physically i mean and so he had a, a kind of als that like it's real slow real slow so who knows where it started but you 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 see someone physically start to decline and Part of you just goes, oh, well, they're getting older. It's no big deal. Mm -hmm. And that's what we did. We kind of were just like, oh, you know, dad, dad's getting older. But now we're watching 70-year-old fuckers do P90X or whatever yeah. the hell or mm -hmm. cut, cut out carbohydrates and they're jacked. But uh, so that we didn't really think anything of it. And we just knew he was getting a little weaker, but we didn't really think of it. You know, like, And he had so much other shit. He had skin cancer. He beat skin cancer, but then came back. He had a, he had heart issues. He had two fake hips, a fake knee. The dude was like, <laughs> the dude was a damn tin man. Okay, like he had shit. The fact we got him till seventy seven. Um, but one of the things about all of those things is he didn't. He never wanted us to know that how much pain he was in or what or what he was going through very old school mentality that way so i never knew how bad he had it until the skin cancer stuff uh if you watch my special daddy issues which is streaming on amazon prime um i talk about it and there's a moment where uh and dude i'll never forget this so he had skin cancer and we knew it was bad i was in the, i was at the comedy work south club and i knew that day my dad had gone and gotten a test. He'd been getting treatment. And I knew that today we're finding out he's, he's getting the results. So I'm watching my phone all day. And the show starts. Opening acts are up. Literally, the last guy before me is on stage closing up. And I see my phone ringing. It's my mom. And I know what this call is. So I pick up the phone. And I answer it. I go, Mom. First word she said was, he's in remission. And I was just, I fell to my knees. Like that, that loud cry, that like that ugly, wail yeah. cry. I'm doing that. And literally as I'm doing that, you hear, please welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Red Williams. I'm like, you know, and it was, if you've, if you've ever seen the movie For the Love of the Game with Kevin Costner, there's just that moment where you go, Clear the mechanism, <laughs> and then you go on stage and you have to fight through it. And that was, and that was a show that I brought it up for the first time. I, I did not talk about my dad's cancer at all. It, I, I would start and would just no, couldn't do it. That was the first time I did, and I did. And the ending of that is the end of uh, the Daddy Issue special. So I'm on stage. I'm shooting my special. We got one shot at this because before I really sold tickets, we busted our ass. We sold out the Alex Theater, Glendale, California, and we got one shot to get this right. And I'm doing all the cancer stuff. Now, my dad's in the audience. I know he's in the audience. I know where he's sitting. 
and, I'm, and, and in my head, I'm like, don't look at him. Do not look at him. You're going to lose your shit. But I'm doing the bits. And then, of course, just like when you say, don't look down, you look down. I looked at him. And I stopped. And in the middle of the set, uh, I start talking to him. And it's the first time I ever really talk to him because he can't respond. I'm, a, I'm on stage. He's and, that far. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, I can see him. I can talk to him. But I got to say all the things that my dad wouldn't really let me say before because, you know, it's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Move on. We've, we had. Yeah. So, like, and the fact that I have that moment on camera and then God bless this cameraman gets a shot of my dad because I, I start building him up because I, I, I start saying thank you. And thank you for doing everything, and thank you for teaching me, and thank you for doing it. I, and I and I'm gonna be okay. And and my dad starts fist pumping, and you and the cameraman got that, and uh, all that was improvised. I had no idea that I was gonna do that, but then once I had eye contact with him, I start like tearing up, and I'm just like, I, I have to talk. I, I I have to talk to him. I have to address this. And I'm so glad I did. Like, does it suck that he passed away? Of course. But uh, I heard this quote from a, uh, pr a podcast personality. Her name is Gina Grad, and she told me this quote, and I love it. It's, uh, grief is love with nowhere to go. Mm. I love that quote because that's what it is. The reason why you're so sad is because you love this person. And can't tell them. Can't, can't tell show them. them. Can't nothing. But I also looked at it that way is now when I'm feeling sad and the fact that I was – sad obviously when he passed that's a reminder that i was very lucky very lucky that i had a great dad dude sitting here listening to these i can't even believe you got that yeah so yeah ever tried to break a bad habit and felt like you're climbing mount everest and flip-flops well here's a breath of fresh air fume it's not about giving up it's about switching up fume takes your habit and simply makes it better healthier and a whole lot more enjoyable fume is an innovative award-winning flavored air device that does just that instead of vapor Fume uses flavored air. Instead of electronics, fume is completely natural. And instead of harmful chemicals, fume uses delicious flavors. Your fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and is designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting, giving your fingers a lot to do, which is helpful for de-stressing and anxiety while breaking your habit. You get it. Instead of bad, fume is good. It's a habit you're free to enjoy and makes replacing your bad habit easy. Start the year off right with the good habit by going to tryfume.com slash honeydew and getting the journey packed today. Fume is giving listeners of the show 10% off when they use my code honeydew to help make starting the good habit that much easier. Now, let's get back to the do. So let me ask you this. Yeah. Um, your daughter. So was did he get to meet your daughter just in yes. time, huh? So here's the other thing. When... The if you ever watch, remember that show inside the actor's studio? Mm -hmm. Mike Myers is on it and they're doing the five questions at the end. And one and one of the questions is, if heaven exists, what do you want God to say when you get to the pearly gates? And Mike Myers' answer was he saw it because his dad died real young and didn't get to see him SNL, didn't get to see Austin Powers, and didn't get to see it. So he wanted that. He wanted and I just I remember that. And I think about it. My dad saw my sister make partner at her accounting firm. Oh, good. Saw me do multiple comedy specials, three comedy specials, met met his grandkids, you know, saw them. His his last <laughs> sorry. His last words before we couldn't before he wasn't verbal. His last words were he looked at my daughter and said, I love her. So he got to see it. He got to see it. He got to see my success. He was proud. I would uh uh I would go over there and my mom would pull me aside. This is when he was sick, and he would go and she would tell me, she goes, Brad, he sits there in, in this bed and he says, Alexa, play Brad Williams. Oh. And he hears the bits. So it's not that I'm I'm 
I'm, I'm proud and I'm lucky that that's my experience because I can't imagine my dad passing away and I've, I have friends that this, that this is true for them. Their dads pass away and they go, good riddance. Fuck yeah. that old man. You know, I can't imagine that. Like we we're we're both dads. Can you imagine? You know, that's that, that the whole the the goal. My goal is for when I finally go for my daughter to feel the kind of pain that I felt. I can't believe that's a statement, but it is. I want her to be that sad that wow, we lost a good one. Yeah. You know what I mean? You 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 strive for that pain. You want that's a mark and that's how you remember the person is it is that pain. So if you've lost someone and you feel pain, just try to hold on to that pain as a reminder of their existence and it's a tribute. It truly is. The pain is a tribute to them and what they meant to you. Yeah. So, I, I say all the time, for me personally, we did not come up um, affluent or anything like yeah. that. But, and I'm going to ask you this, mm -hmm. you know, it wouldn't have mattered to me if we had a swimming pool out back and it wouldn't no. have made this loss no. any easier. Mm -mm. It wouldn't have made it feel, and I mean, honestly, looking back on your life growing yeah. up, the man you had versus the things that man gave you, yeah. the, what mattered the most? Oh, the man. Him being yeah. who he was. The not man in the pool out back no. or the or the Christmas fucking room. <laughs> None of that. Real right. Is your life any different if you don't have a fucking separate room for one holiday? It would no. be. I mean, but well, if he's a yeah. piece of shit or absent completely, yeah. none now, of that fucking now matters. Now it's different. Yeah. Now it's different. Yeah. So you look at stuff like that, and that's why as a dad who is uh thank God that because like my dad would go on golf trips or business trips or whatever. And it was just like, well, he's going to get a, we're going to get a call at some point and it's going to be like two minutes because you had to pay by the minute and long distance yes, was expensive. Right. And, and if the fucker didn't run the air conditioning, right. you yeah. best believe he wasn't yeah. having hour long conversations, <laughs> long distance. MCI. We used to pay for that. Yeah. Shit. We used to pay for that. Yeah, shit. We sure did a lot now, of money too. We have an advantage to where, you know, I can FaceTime. There, 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 there's been times I get a FaceTime call from my wife on the road and I'll answer it or I'll get a text from my wife going, Hey, uh, Elway, that's my daughter's name. Broncos fan. For uh, real? Yeah. Her, <laughs> her birth name, first birth, name birth is name. Elway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Raheem F and more. <laughs> so she'll text me and she'll go, uh, Elway just said, I miss daddy. And I'll, I'll be like, cool. I'll stop whatever I do. FaceTime. Let's get that. Let's get let, mm -hmm. let let's get that time, and uh, we're 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 very fortunate that we get to do that with oh, our kids. Oh, thank God! I'd hate it for, like knowing that oh. we have that now. I don't know how my dad did it. He would drive an hour to work one way and back. There's no cell phones, text. They're working. Well, you couldn't working. call him and chat at the. No, all. he's out there working. You mm -hmm. know, it was you got that time when you got that time. Yeah, yeah. and 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 I like, I you know, and as the partner or whatever, it's just like, all right. Your 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 husband, your wife, whatever, just left. What are they doing? You don't know. When are they, when are they, when are they coming home? You don't know. Figure out. You know, because because maybe dad stops off and, mm -hmm. and grabs dinner because he's hungry as shit. Maybe you know, like you don't know. So uh, it, it's very we're, we're 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 living in a good time where we're very fortunate that we're a, that we're able to do that. Now, I'm I'm gonna tell you this because uh, uh, you lost your dad when you were young. Now they're having these like AI shit. I've read articles about this to where you can like submit voicemails, texts, photos, videos, and they can essentially create. Mm -mm. Okay. I'm, I'm with you. It just, I don't know. Well, first of all, my dad died before all that shit yeah, existed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, yeah. <laughs> so he's done. Yeah. But. I, I mean, I hear you. I'm sure you can submit videos, pictures, voices, yeah. and they craft a little digital image or you yeah, got a little yeah, Obi Wan yeah. down here on you the fucking talk. table talking yeah. and shit like a you can like talk. a Billy. Uh, yeah. I've been starting to watch Sopranos over again. They got that Billy Bass, that yeah. bass, you know what I'm talking about? Like <laughs> that thing on your yeah, like that thing on your wall. He just yeah, comes yeah. in. Yeah. 
<laughs> that's on your wall. Your yeah. fucking grandma looking at yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Like, eh. like, man. Yeah, I don't no. know about that. I think here's the thing, though. I've seen a few videos that I, you know I'm, I don't care. I'm an emotional man. I cry a lot. Sure. I'll see these videos of like um, some loved one had passed away, and they make him a teddy bear, and the teddy bear has a voicemail in it, mm -hmm. like a build a bear, and it's their grandfather, or whatever. <laughs> yeah. That I, you know, I don't know why I'm okay with that. Yeah. But the fucking or, or a full on replica of me for my daughter no. and her kids. No. no, no, no. Because think of all the content we've put out. Yeah. So you could you could string together any sentence you want that mm -hmm. Ryan Sickler said. Yep. Or Brad Williams actually said yep. from all of the thousands of hours of content we've been putting out for, yeah. you know, a yeah. decade or more. Yeah. So you can. Yeah. I'm not. I've got I've got voicemails from my dad. I haven't listened to him. You do? You haven't listened to one? No. I'm not ready there. I'm not Can ready. I, yet. Hey, I'm going to tell you this. This I is have some a full podcast episode where I just where I just interviewed my dad. It, it, if, if you go to the about last night podcast that's that's i did that with adam ray uh he still does it on under the same name we're not not friends we just i decided that i i once i became a dad i want more time mm -hmm. so and podcasts take up a lot of time yeah so uh, i do them by myself yeah he mm -hmm. keeps doing it so but if you go back you scroll back you'll find one with pete williams that's me talking to my dad i haven't listened to it uh back I don't know when I will. I don't know if I'm going to be ready for it. But, yeah, I can't even listen to voicemails. And I have them on my phone, and I can almost guarantee you that it's just like, hey, son, call me. You know, I'm I'm sure it's that. You know, there's nothing really there, – there, there, there's not going to be a profound word in there. Like, well, let me tell you about the meeting of life. Like, yeah, like it's not going to be that. Four words, and it's going to wreck you for the day. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to wreck me. I'm glad I have it. Yeah. I like knowing I can. Uh, I heard uh, – a great comic, uh, Dan Soder, t yeah. talk on a podcast because he lost his dad young, and he said something that kind of blew me away. Where he goes, he goes, I don't remember what my dad sounded like. I, 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 I don't remember I was about his voice. To tell you that. Yeah. Do you? I don't. I mean, in my mind, I think I do. Yeah. But I thought the same thing. This is why I thought the same thing about my grandmother. And just mm -hmm. a few years ago, a cousin of mine that's older than me was yeah. like, my mom found this VHS and it's got uh, your grandma on it at this uh, baby mm -hmm. shower. I'm like, oh, I'd love to see it. Yeah. So I, they gave it to me. I got the um, I got it. Or yep, and I put it in. And she definitely sounded different than I remembered. Ooh. For sure. Okay. A little little pitch with pit or the pitch of her voice was slightly different. Yeah. You know, it was her. Obviously it's her. Yeah. But yeah, it had been so long. So I'm wondering. Yeah. Cause you have this episode of your father. He's probably, I mean, it'll probably always sound the same, maybe. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. Yeah. But seeing that and hearing her talk on camera and stuff, I was like, look at my grandma. And yeah. she definitely sounded different. I was like, I'll bet you my dad does on. I probably too. will. I'll I'll probably I'll, I'll, I'll probably listen to that episode may, maybe with my daughter because my dad passed when she was two. So she's not really mm -hmm. going to have memories. So that would be something that that we probably do together and just telling stories. I, I heard this quote once and. I try. I try to remember it. It's uh. They, they say you die twice. You die when you die, and then you die when people forget you. So I don't want everyone to ever forget, or I want to you know keep that going on as long as possible. Obviously, no one's telling me stories about my grand grand pop pop or whatever the heck, bro. It's so it's gonna happen. It'll happen. <laughs> it's coming. You know, I don't um, care how much we leave behind on digital this. Yeah, and that. it's coming. It's coming. So that's so that's. You know that, so I, mean, I just you think about this right? stories. Yeah. George Washington, these men, Ben Franklin, Abe yeah. Lincoln. Back then, they were like, they're never going to be forgotten, and they're not because they're in history. But yeah, every day people aren't sitting around going, you know, your great great grandfather, yeah. Abe Lincoln's damn shame he's not here. <laughs> Nobody gives a fuck. No one gives a fuck. That they're, kid doesn't give a they're fuck. They're too busy <laughs> in their own <laughs> lives. Give a fuck. Yes, they, they 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 got shit going on, and that's what you want. Yeah, I don't want. You know, my daughter one day to just be sitting there, you know, years after I'm gone, just in a room crying and not recovered because, you know, she she's still she's still grieving or mm -hmm. whatever. No, I want her to, hey, every now and then just be like, ah, that was a cool thing. And then just and then go do your shit, live your life. So I want to ask you yeah. um, sort of like the last days time you've spent with your father. Yeah. Um, 
so you said around 74 it was sort of diagnosed and mm -hmm. over the course of three years it slowly uh took them like that yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah what um what sort of time were you able to spend near the end was he uh, out, was he at least home to being taken care of or oh, was yeah. he in a facility no he was or? home he he was the guy that he's like no i, I paid for this house i'm dying in this house mm -hmm. so Put me in the christmas yeah. room <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me ask Christmas one more time. Drag me up to the Christmas room, God. <laughs> it's February, Dad. I don't, don't give, give a shit. fuck. Decorate a tree, God. <laughs> Stockings go in the other room, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Christmas room. Christmas room. I'm, I'm dying in that room, God. Damn. I'm going to have so many of your fans. I still have fans from the Crab Feast Hell yeah. that come up Feasters. to me and talk to me about the story about me losing my virginity. <laughs> I Dude, still have I that. Love it, still have I love that. It. I love so, uh, it. You have uh, a kid now. Yeah, I have a kid now. And so I'm sure people will come up because I'm, I'm, I'm still doing meet and greets after the shows. So they'll probably come up and be like, we had a Christmas room or fuck your Christmas room. I want to meet the affluent people out there that had a holiday room. You know, somebody's parents had an Easter room or some bullshit. Yeah. So, oh, uh, man. Uh, okay. So he's in the house. Yeah. He's in the house. Uh, it would just be. You know, he'd be, he became very light sensitive at the end. So he'd have these big black glasses on, but he would come in, we'd sit down, we'd talk. He'd take a lot of naps. Uh, so he was still moving around. He wasn't bedridden. Yeah. Oh, he was bedridden at the very end. The very end. But like, you know, because even. Because I know you lose your muscle ability yeah. and everything. So he was still walking though yeah. for a while. Yeah. It, it So it didn't hit him. The, like we've seen like the HBO Real Sports where the guy's in the bed and he has to talk with like mm -hmm. moving his eyes around. It never got to him like that. But like I said earlier, he he just had so many things that were that it just kind of accelerated everything. But like during COVID, we would still go over there and visit. And then he would, you know, be over there outside and we would be over here. We would still talk. We would, he'd, he'd, he'd watch my daughter play and stuff. And uh, yeah, so we still that's the thing is we got that time, man. We got that time. We got to say goodbye. He got to see stuff. And that's like. Here, here's how much death sucks, Ryan. Obviously, it sucks. But here's how much it sucks. My dad died in his house with my mom by his side. I was in the house as well. I I had just gone up to. We knew it was coming. Oh, so that's was, what I wanted to ask. Yeah, okay. we we knew so it was you're coming. There for so this. we're there, and we see him. And you know, like like I said, last words were I I love her to his granddaughter. Um. Yeah, like he had he had his favorite music playing, like it was. You, you can't write a better storybook ending, and in, it still sucks. Yeah, you still, got yeah. the He's Rolls Royce dead. of yeah. deaths, and you're still just like this <laughs> shit. Like it, it stinks, you know. And uh, man, yeah. to to f oh, and then if any of us are lucky enough to yeah. go like that and not at some gas station or <laughs> some fuck, you know oh, what I mean, my, or in front dude, of your kids or my fear. Is that I don't I don't fear death, Ryan. What I fear is that right before I die, I I know it's coming and I go, you gotta be shitting me. <laughs> <laughs> like that's how I die. I don't I fear die. death either. I do fear where that shit's yes. gonna go. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. you know what I mean? Like it, not it, here. Yeah, it's <laughs> the it's the ironic deaths of, of like uh, of like uh, your wife or whatever says like we're not going up that hill mm -hmm. we're not yeah. going up that yeah. hill you're like we're going up the fucking hill and then, and then well, you go what's the matter with going up yeah. the hill and then yeah. and then you go up the hill and there's a mountain lion you're like you gotta be shitting me like like this is how it ends like yeah and by the way I'm throwing it out right now whenever fuck I go if Twitter is still around or some version of Twitter let the jokes fly people let them fly mm -hmm. I know they're coming. <laughs> yeah there's no we're not avoiding it it's fine there's let people it. wishing it for us now yeah. while we're alive it yeah. ain't gonna be any nicer when we're gone nah let them fly it's yeah. fine uh uh so yeah i definitely that's what that's what i fear about the ironic death and here's what i would say because i so I don't, I, I don't i don't know if you've learned this of when you have now friends that lose people that are close to them i know how to be there for them more now because of i knew what like i knew what helped me so like for me personally and obviously every, everyone's different so who knows but like when people would text and say is there anything i can do i hate that shit 
I hate it. I know it, it's coming from a good place. Dude, I've told this story before, but we oh. were kids when our dad died. So oh. everyone showed up from the school. Yeah. Like we had a JV soccer coach that came yeah. over. And my brothers and I were just dicks. And we had been yeah. tired of... We've been tired of the kindness. At mm -hmm. some point, you get a little bit like uh, annoyed with it because you're like, "Yeah, all right, enough." You yes. know what I mean? We're not and, a charity case. You know, you just yes. feel like a loser. And so you have to take time and sort of give them what yeah. they want, right? Which is the moment and the so conversation yeah. and the thank you and the blah, 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 which is just all right. So we had a JV coach come oh. up to us because now my mom had left our family. So we yeah. don't have parents now. And it's oh, well known yeah. in, in this yeah. community that that's they, these kids are. Yeah. So the coach comes up and we're like, look, next person to ask us if we want something, we should just tell them we want $10,000. <laughs> and we all get on the same page. Our JV coach comes up to us. And he's like, if you know, if there's anything my wife and I can do to help you out, I'm like, actually, uh, there is. He's like, what? Name it. And I was mm -hmm. like, we could really use about ten thousand dollars. <laughs> and his fucking face, dude. We started laughing. So my dad's dead to calm it up there. Yeah. Me and my brothers are in the back and laughing so hard. He's like, uh, I thought you guys were serious. I'm like, well, we're not not serious. Yeah, we're not, not, <laughs> we're not gonna turn it down. Because <laughs> it's like, all right, all right, so. Uh, I I I had I had a friend who was gonna lost someone close, and here's what I did, and you can do whatever version of this works for whatever person. I just tech I texted and I said, hey, don't have to respond. That's the first thing. Don't have to respond. And if someone passes away, here's a thing. Here's a tip for y'all: get a cut and paste message. In your phone in, ready. In your phone ready. Because <laughs> you're going to get a lot of texts. Just like, hey, sorry. And it it takes a lot physically and emotionally to text to every single person. An individualized, yes, we're we're doing okay. Ba, 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 ba. Cut and paste. Just to, 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 to make that happen. But just I just text people, hey, you, you do not have to respond. Just know that we're thinking Send about you. Send them a you. heart emoji. Yeah, and just know that you know you have you have a lot of love that that is around you, and and we're here. Um, I want to ask you this. Oh, and here, and one, one sure. more thing. Send food. Yep, a hundred percent. Listen Send to me. Send food. Food. They don't have to cook. Take their yes. time to order things. Stop Think and get about it. it. They just go You're home. Not it's in the fridge. It. You're grieving, and you might not even be hungry. But when you are, it's there. And it's, it's there. Yes, hundred percent. That's my thing too. That Always is, send food. That is what you'll need. And Dude. money if you got. Yeah, send food or send money. <laughs> send my Christmas room. Food would never go wrong. Yeah. Just send them a bunch of food. Yeah. Send food. That is my tip. When they're like, "Is there anything I can do?" Fucking yes, send yep. food. I'm sending you a bunch of food. That's it. Okay. And that was the question. I want to know, mm -hmm. before we get you out of here, yeah. your daughter's four now. So yep. what scares you as a dad most, knowing you don't have your dad as mm -hmm. a sounding board and a resource? Just certain things that I know that he was smarter about than me. Like, um, when, when it comes to money, he was very smart. He knew how to invest. He keep that to, AC off. Keep bro. that AC yeah. off. Man. We're on a tight ship. Right? He knew how to, you know, you know, make sure that future generations could have Christmas rooms. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. He 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 was good with that. I don't know how to do that. When I go to buy a car, I'm like, "What's the price?" They're like, "This." I'm like, "Cool." Like, <laughs> it's it's not because I'm. It, I don't know how to negotiate. I'm mm -hmm. not a good negotiator. Uh, we also have to know what you're negotiating for, too. Yeah. You can't just be throwing numbers around. Yeah. Like, it don't work that way. Yeah. I, like, with, uh, the last car I bought, the guy, the guy that I bought it from at the dealership said, yes, way too fast. And I'm like, fuck. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I knew. Like, And that's that stuff where I go, man, he could have really helped out with Has that. Has that happened? Have you, had you found yourself wanting to call him or text oh. him or send him a picture or anything? In All the, the time. Yeah. All the time. I'm doing... You still not used to it yet? Um, you know what I mean? I, I don't think I ever will be. Yeah. There will always be those times where you're like, oh, man. Like, dude, like, I'm playing in Nashville. I'm playing the Ryman Auditorium. That's the home of country music. You don't think I want him to be there? See the... see the. I mean, he, he's not even a fan of country music, but he gets it. He gets what that is. You don't think I want him to see... 
you know, me on stage and uh, 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 where Johnny Cash used to play. Like, yeah, of course, I want that. I'm playing the theater at the Ace Hotel. It's a beautiful theater. The Ace Hotel is closed and the theater is not, just for that reference. But, like, yeah, I, I wanted to be there for that. I just got a part in a really cool movie that I'll, oh, that I'll, I'll, I'll tell you about off camera. I'm not allowed to announce yet. But uh, it's a really cool movie. And I'm doing – and it's definitely a movie that he would have liked to have seen. So it's like – yeah, there will always be those moments. But I, I just try to be thankful and look back and be like, but he saw so much. Yeah. And, of course, there's always going to be moments. And, you know, I'll be doing something at age 70 that will probably be really cool as shit. I'll be like, ah, I wish he had seen that. You know, uh, 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 some, you know, the comedy store will give me some award. Like, yeah, it's the, the, the most prolific dwarf comic of all time. <laughs> <laughs> little tiny word but uh yeah i'll be doing something like that and i'll be like yeah i wish he was there i, I the, the thing is is like the other thing that got me is uh my daughter doesn't have a grandfather now yeah. on both my side and my wife's side so she's, she's got two grandmas that are wonderful but she doesn't have that because i i've got stories of my granddad uh, uh the one from oil died when i was young i don't have too many stories of him other than the fact that I still have my tonsils because of him. Uh, the doc, the doc, random story, but the doctor said that boy needs his tonsils and his adenoids taken out. And my grandfather went, you're not taking his tonsils. And all the parents went, okay. <laughs> like, all right. All right, granddad. You you still have them. You still, still, still got them. I probably, I, I, I probably got a little bit of apnea because of it. Uh, I wonder, man. I never had my yeah. tonsils out, and yeah. I have apnea now, and I wonder if it in that damn tonsils dude, back there. Dude, the sleep I'm study, serious, man. Bro. I did. I have it. Well, okay. They say they tell me my tongue is wide, and it relaxes down in my throat when okay. I sleep, and it clogs my throat. And I'm like, yeah, but if we cut tonsils out, does yeah. it open airways up back there, yeah. motherfucker? Yeah, can we cut the tongue, the width of the <laughs> tongue <laughs> something it down yeah it? something like that but so yeah they're 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 I'm, I'm sad i'm sad that my daughter won't get a grandfather in that way but um yeah and it's stuff like where now i don't know about you but i'm just trying to make sure everything is in place everything is good so that god forbid i'm on that alaska airlines flight and that door pops off, and yeah. poof, there goes yep. Brad. There goes Brad. Yeah, <laughs> if that, ah! if that, that would definitely be a you got to be shitting me. That would dead. be. Uh, you but, got time to think about. Yeah, you got yeah, time. I got no, time. I'm dying. I'm mother. dying. I'm not hitting that. Great. I'm, I'm not <laughs> gonna be like. No way. I'm living no, through this shit. I'm right? not that iPhone. <laughs> ah, yeah. I'm not gonna bounce and be like, cool. <laughs> so I got battery. No, you're gonna be. Th you're up there for so long. I'm there for five, six seconds. You're gonna scream your braids out. You're gonna be so physically tired scream then you're gonna start thinking like yeah i'm definitely gonna what am i gonna hit a yeah. tree a grant what am i gonna hit yeah <laughs> can i can, can i at least like find a nazi that i can like run into <laughs> can <laughs> i land on a piece of shit person <laughs> like can I, can I missile myself in there yeah at least you know take out somebody oh, but yeah it's uh it, like if that god forbid that happens i just want to make sure my daughter's okay and Good. so I'm, that's I'm, all you can do i've done that my everything yeah. living will and trust life yep. insurance it's all set so yep. if i would have dropped last january mm -hmm. she would have been set i'm glad she ain't set yeah <laughs> i'm glad she ain't set you know that's, what I'm you know what that's uh it's funny i, I was watching um uh if right if, if you watch the show it was house of dragon the game of thrones prequel mm -hmm. whatever that is dragon house i'm not sure what it is <laughs> it's house of dragon but house dragon, of dragon house <laughs> dragon house sounds like a good reality show <laughs> welcome back to dragon house this is your boy <laughs> ll cool j we got nine dragons anyway um but if you watch that there's a scene i'm 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 i'm, I'm spoil something minor but there's the old king and he's hanging on He's just hanging on. Half his face is fucking gone, and he's hanging on. And then all of a sudden, he, he gets all of his kids back to the castle for like a meal, and he kind of, and they all kind of tell him like, "Yeah, we're all here. We're all together, and we're all good." And that night, he dies. And I look at that scene. And I go, "I totally get that now. Totally get it. I totally get why you'd be hanging on, hanging on, just be like, y'all are good." Cool. Great. Deuces. Oh, yeah. Like, yes. that's what I... Here we go. Like, obviously, you always want more time, but I just want, you know, my last thoughts to be like, I did it. 
cool, they're good. Yeah. You know, that and and my dad had that. My dad had that. He really did. Everyone was everyone was okay. The one of the last things he did was put aside, you know, some money from for my daughter. And uh not a crazy amount, but just an amount where you go, that'll help. And uh it's good. So that was one of the last things he did. And that's all I want. I, w- I want everyone to be good. Unless they're like, you know, snot-nosed piece of shit. Then it's like, ah, oh, you're not kidding. <laughs> yeah. All it takes, I say that all the time, too. All it takes is one fucking crackhead asshole to ruin generational wealth. That's all it takes to <laughs> one. Dude, Just thank one. you for coming here and doing this. Dude. I really appreciate it. And this is the first time I've really talked about this. Thank and you. I knew I was going to talk about it. And I, I would, this morning, I was like, am I ready to do this? I don't know. But... I I am, and this helped. So th- this is always good, and the fact that I'm doing it with you makes it a lot easier because it's like I'm not doing it on some morning radio show or some asshole's playing a cowbell. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Brad does it. <laughs> wink, 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 wink. Cowbell, cowbell, cowbell. It's a dead dad morning in here on the on the dead dead dad drive time. 98.5. Dead dad drive. Brad Williams. <laughs> He's going to be playing the comedy club this weekend. BradWilliamsComedy.com. Oh, Tell us shit. more about your father. No, we did not get that. So the, oh, the, 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 this, this is a wonderful place. This is a safe place. And uh, I'm always happy to see you, my friend. Same, brother. Thank you very much. Please promote everything one more time. BradWilliamsComedy.com. Those are all the tour dates. Over 70 dates. I'm going. It's almost. I, I feel like Tom Segura. I'm coming fucking everywhere. All right? And uh, and if I'm not coming, wait. We got more shows that we're going to be announcing. We're going to different countries. We got a European and Australian thing coming. So I'm coming, okay? Uh, 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 look at the website. Look, because... And now this is going to happen because I'm about to say it. But as a comic, the worst thing, you just got you just played a city and then you get back you get that message. When are you playing this city that you were just fucking in nonstop? Don't be that guy. Yeah. So uh, go to that. Watch the new special. The new special is called Starfish. It's on Veeps. V-E-E-P-S. You can get it. And one cool function about Veeps is there's a chat. There's a chat as you stream it. Oh, is that right? Yeah. And it stays up there for like, so the past people, so you could go back and see what other people thought, uh, see if anyone says anything racist. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> so, so yeah, you can go you, you can go there. So veeps.com, the special is called Starfish. Enjoy it. Buy a ticket. See me live. And I'll say this for you. Like, rate, and subscribe to this podcast because uh, keep this thing going. Yeah, thank you, man. Thank yeah. you very much. Uh, and thank you guys as well. As always, Ryan Sickler on your social media, ryansickler.com. Come see me on tour. We'll talk to y'all next week. Mm-hmm.